Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, as I said before. Okay, um... Quick Time Flyer is being really laggy today. Yes, it is. Uh, if you hear all that stuff from before, it's us just messing around. But, anyway, um... Lily here, and... I'm Mario. Mario Bros. AI Productions. You may remember me as the creator of BFRP and BFRK yes, and Kingdom. Yes, we know you. Hush. <laughs> anyway, um, got my water. Got my screen. I think I'm ready to start another day. My voice is feeling much better today, so that's probably a good sign. I don't have very much water left, but uh, hopefully it'll be enough. So, let's get started. Where were we? We were right. We hadn't even started this page yet. Okay. Uh, let's get right into it. No good, you call on Anna. The bridge is going to be out. You both head back inside. As you peel off the poncho, Anna's mother squints out the window and seems to make up her mind without about something. Alright, with the cloud cover, it's starting to get pretty dark. Let's fire up the generators. She reaches over and pushes a red button on the side of her desk. You jump as a loud air horn blares overhead. Come on, our generator's out back in the garage. Oh, and I'm Maria, by the way. She extends her hand, and when you shake it, she pulls out the door. At least the rain is tapering off by this point. In the garage, you see a big old welding generator next to an exhaust fan that points outside. Not the best setup, perhaps, but it'll keep the drizzle off the generator. The label on the side says it generates 210 amps. Tracing the cord, you see it's plugged into an old circuit breaker. Everything looks a little ramshackle, with tools scattered around and duct tape holding most of it together. Still, this isn't too much of a surprise, considering you doubt anyone will be doing any welding tonight. The only other feature of the garage is heavy chains set directly into the concrete floor. You shudder as you think of what they might be for. I'll crank the generator, you flip the breaker, Maria says as she moves towards the generator. Anna stands back as you inspect the breaker and see that the various channels are labeled as follows. Fan, 10 amps. Fence 1, 30 amps. Fence 2, 35 amps. Fence 3, 30... Why are the three fences identical and yet one of them... Okay, whatever. Searchlight, 5 amps. Water duster, 10 amps. Water pump and heater, 25 amps. House lights, 15 amps. Garage lights, 5 amps. Outside lights, 10 amps. Appliances, 40 amps. Okay. It takes me three tries, and more than three curses, but the generator eventually comes to life. Now, throw the main switch, she calls to you. You flip the strip switch and yelp as sparks fly out of the breaker. Maria quickly turns off the generator as Anna starts to snicker. I think I'll call you Sp Sparky, she says, laughing at her own joke. Maria throws her a withering looking. <laughs> a withering looking. Great. But she's way too pleased with herself to care. With a solemn expression, Maria inspects the breaker. A fuse is blown, and the only ones she has left to replace it are not rated for 210 amps. Maria sighs. Okay, here's what I need you to do. These new fuses are only rated for 150 amps. The switches are ranked in order of importance. Uh, obviously, the fan defenses come first because they keep us from dying and so on from there. You're going to have to turn off all the switches that can make this thing draw 150 amps or more. I'll go get a new fuse. What's the last numbered switch that you could have turned on in order to have fewer than 150 amps? Well, this isn't that hard, is it? It's just adding. Yeah. Addition. Okay, I can do this without you, so. Addition for the win. Um, fan, fence one, that's 40, 75, 105, 110, 120, 145, I think the seven. Seven, yeah. That's simple. Will you click, please? Currently, the application patient has a switch from quick time to chrome. Oh, the seven lag. Yes, enter. Correct. I'm good at addition. Yep, you're Please. good at addition. You let out a sigh of relief as machinery begins to come to life around you. Good, Anna begins as she proceeds to check things off her finger. Fence is charging. Searchlights are on. Time to test the water. Test the water, you ask? Yeah, we use rainwater and truck in the filter stuff whenever possible, but we're in low at the moment. Anna explains as Maria takes what looks kind of like a remote control with an antenna off the charging station on the wall. 
We pumped some water up from the river, but we have to test it before we can use it. You see, zombies fall in the river sometimes. They're not too bright, and this can contaminate, can, la, 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 contaminate the water around them. This will tell us whether or not the water can be safely used. You inspect the device as Maria fetches a pail of water to test from the tank out back. The device has several buttons, an LCD screen, and a printed warning on the front. Warning, safe concentration in water is less than 42 parts per million ppm. Less than 42 parts per million. Okay. Um, flipping over the device, you see it covering the add batteries, but no instructions on how to operate the device. Seeing your puzzled expression, Anna comes over to help. Here, you turn it on, then put the antenna in the water, and hit this button to take the reading. She explains as she demonstrates each step. Fifteen seconds later, the device beeps and she pulls it out of the water. A frown spreads across her face as she looks at the screen. Ugh, Mom, it's doing that thing again, she calls out to her mother. Maria comes over with an exasperated look on her face and looks at the screen. You lean over and see the following on the display. Uh, save to contaminant. 1 to 1.75 times 10 to the negative 4. Great, it's in scientific notation again, grumbles Maria. She fills with the other buttons, but is unable to change the readout. What is the concentration of the contain? Okay, um, let's see. So in parts case per million. In case you're wondering, by parts per million, normally when she operates this device, it's supposed to say one million to some number. But here it's just not working for her. Her. Let's see. Her. Negative one is one tenth. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. 10 to the negative 4 has to be 1 ten thousandth, then. So, so 1.75... Over 10,000. Over 10,000 is... 175... 175 one millionth. So, so it's 175 parts per million, I guess? Yeah. Type it in. 175 each, that's a lot. Uh, does that say correct? Correct. Yes, it does. No way we can use this, do you explain? The water, this water has like four time, four time more contaminants than the safe level. Four time more contaminant, guys. Darn, mother is Maria. I really wanted to take a shower tonight. Well, hmm, she pauses for a second, a few seconds before continuing. Anna, honey? Yeah, mom? Anna replies with a wary look that betrays the fact that she knows a work assignment is incoming. Can you start getting dinner ready while I check on the fences? I realize there aren't any power inside, so break up the candles, I guess. Maria says with a shrug. Alright, Mom. Dad should be home soon. Maybe I can get him to help. Anna disappears into the dark house, leaving you and Maria alone in the garage. Maria turns to you. So, the system's a little jury rigged. The old capacitor just burned out, but we've got a new capacitor. I think it's one-fourth of a farad, and we need to charge it to 50 watts. Can you dial in the voltage to for me? You stared blankly at her. Oh, okay. Uh, the fence isn't fully charged the whole time. That would waste too much energy. She explains. A capacitor stores up the energy and then releases it all at once. The formula should be on the sheet taped to the system over there. You go over to the device and see its aisle connected to some tubes. The handwritten note, the handwritten note attached to the device contains a few scrolls on it. Formula. Power, watt, power times watts equal... Power in watts. Power in watts equals one half times capacitance farads times Capacitance. voltage squared. Capacitance one fourth of a farad. Needed power fifty watts. Volts. The bottom number of the node is water damage, and you can't quite make out the voltage. How much voltage do you need to set the dial in order to fully charge the capacitor? Okay, so I'm gonna need a second a, to take this all in. This is a formula. Or formula. So imagine it as this. Okay, so it, one half yeah. times a full. Well, first voltage squared, but we don't know the voltage yet. So, so think about it as a formula. Fifty equals one half times one fourth times v squared. So solve for v. V. Okay, so fifty equals one half times one fourth times v squared. I see. So one half times one fourth is one eighth. So what would make one eighth times so, eighth 
What would make so, uh, one half so, times b squared so, equal fifty? Right. So now. Fifty uh, equals one eighth times b squared. First of all, let's get rid. Of, first of all, let's multiply both sides by eight. Yeah, that's so when I want both sides by eight. So we so have four hundred. Uh, four hundred equals v squared. Now we need to take the square root of both sides. The square root of both sides is. And the square root um, of four hundred. Square root of four hundred is something. Let me tell you that it's not an irrational number. It's not an irrational number, it's a perfect square. Um, hmm. Let's think about this. What can you do? Oh, duh, I'm an idiot. Um, it's 20. So, well, try 20, 20 volts. Well, I'm not an idiot, actually. It's kind of difficult to do that off, off the top of your head. Maybe it's just me, though. You dial in the correct voltage and step back as the device hums to life. Okay, that sounds good, says Maria with an approving nod. The problem is, this is the first night we've used this new capacitor, and we don't know if the current is going to be fatal to the zombies. You groan at the end Why can't anything be straightforward? Maria continues to explain. This one, I actually know the formula for, she says with a, as she drops it down. Power equals watts. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Power equals watts. Power in watts equals current in amps times voltage in volts. Duh. It's called voltage for a reason. We've got 50 watts stored in our. need the current in milliamps. 20 milliamps is fatal to humans and zombies. How many milliamps of current is released when the capacitor discharges? Once again, let's think about uh, this algebraically. Okay. 50, equal, 50 equals 20 V. 50 equals 20... what? 50 equals 20 V, or 20 times V. Oh! Okay. No, 20 times C, because we need the current. Oh, 20, oh, 20 C, gosh darn it. Yeah, C to, times I need, 20, I actually, to, if you want to be specific. I need, but, to my, I need to use more sensible variable names. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and so in, we we're gonna figure the, out an amps and then convert it to milliamps. Okay, that so like a good point. fifty equals twenty times something. Well, that would just be two point five, wouldn't it? Yes. Two point so, five amps so equals. To convert amps to milliamps. You just divide it by a thousand. You actually multiply it by a thousand. Multiply it by a thousand. Wait, what? No, it's milli. It's because there are one thousand milliamps in an amp. No, yeah. that's not multiple. You wouldn't multiply it by a thousand, though, to figure out what... Oh, you would, huh? Ha, ha, ha. You would. You would divide it for, like, mega amps. you divide it if you were figuring out kilo amps, but... Kill, uh, kilo amps. Kilo... Kilo amps would kill a person. Uh, kilo amps would be quite apocalyptic, anyway. actually. Hmm. So... How many milli amps? to milli amps. Uh, well, times thousand is... Uh, um, uh, 25, 25, 25, uh, not 25,000, 2,500. Yeah, that's a lot more than we need. Correct. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fatal to your play. It's actually way more than you need. You might want to get a smaller capacitor to save some power if this works the way I think it does. You admit a little sheepishly. That's all right, says Maria with a smile. As long as it'll get us through tonight. You've been so helpful. She pauses, takes a step back, and turns her head slightly as they're considering you. You know what, she says, wagging a finger at you. I thought we could make a deal. With all the help you've been tonight, you've certainly earned a warm meal and a place to stay, though the best I can offer you is a couch. Plus, if you stick around tomorrow and help us repair any damage from the night, I can pay you in trade. I'll give you those pistol magazines and the ammunition for a day's work. Sound like a deal? She concludes by extending her hand. You grasp and shake it vigorously. That sounds wonderful, you explain. Thank you. Comma. So much. I don't know why you need to comma there. Maria smiles, puts an arm around your shoulder, and steers you into the house. Anna is waiting with a tall, slightly overweight man with graying hair, whom she introduces as her father, Bob. Uh, great name. You know, I need to read that, Archer. Mario. Um, as you all sit down to a meal by candlelight, you can feel the tension start to leave your body. You hadn't even realized how much tension you were holding on to. Sure, it is a little awkward having dinner with almost complete strangers, but the way Anna keeps calling you Sparky instead of your real name makes you think you've been a new friend. Blah, blah, blah. I'm stumbling over words. I need water. 
Good. You laugh at one of Bob's corny jokes as dinner winds down and feel truly at ease. The barely audible moans and occasional loud zapping sounds remind you that this is, at best, a temporary piece. However, as you lie down sleepily on the couch with an extra pillow and an old knit blanket, those cares seem to be from another world. Oh yeah, I just remembered, you're on a mission to save the world from the government. And you're spending time doing math and helping at this weird little town with generators and vaults. Yeah, that seems interesting. So anyway, end, end of, of day one. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the first day. Now would be a good time to write down the web address of this page in case you need to stop and want to start again later in the same place without replaying the entire first day over again. Now would be a good time to stop this episode because we're already up to 15 minutes. Yes, we are. Yes. So, so, um, that was, um, progress in some light. I wasn't nearly as bad at math this time. If that's any consolation, so, uh, this has been Lily. This has been Mario. And, um, hopefully the video audio doesn't lag again. But I think that might have been just us re-watching the video. But anyway. Okay, the file size has reached 100 megabytes. This seems like a great place to end it off. So, uh, I will see you... Next time. I guess. Later. I don't know. I don't really know when you're watching this. Who knows? Bye.